tonight a new video about BIOS upgrades of a Supermicro Super Server. Now here we're looking at a little older article. A typical way, very safe way, is to make bootable media using a utility called Rufus, a bootable DOS media. But there could be some gotchas about UEFI mode and having to change your BIOS. So you're talking about you know several reboots and hitting the uh, key to, at the right spot uh, about a minute into boot when your uh, speaker beeps and warns you to get into the BIOS and so forth. It can be a little bit aggravating. So we're going to try a different way. So here we've got October 17th is now uh, three days ago. Now it's October 20th. And I'm going to go ahead and download this BIOS 1.1c. So let's start with just getting the download going. It's a prep step. All right. Open up that folder and just point out that it needs to be extracted. Because inside is what we really want. And there it is. This is the actual BIOS file. Okay. Now, I said we're going to try a new way. So we're going to go to this article that I linked to, and it's over Supermicro Update Manager or IPMI. So there's different ways of upgrading the BIOS. Okay, guy who's known for home labs here talks about Super Micro Update Manager. So, getting a license key will let us upgrade the BIOS through IPMI, basically. So, I'm going to go to the request page that you talked about and then go ahead and fill this out. Now, email address belongs to the domain, so that can trip some people up. I do have an email address that belongs to tinkertry.com, so this worked fine for me. You may need to try some different email accounts or work accounts to get this form to uh, go in, and then you wait for Supermicro to reply. Uh, when I did it, I think it was within a day or two, but that machine I no longer have. And I believe I had to provide the BMC, the uh, MAC address. So how do we get the MAC address? We log in over IPMI to the server name or IP of the server, and we tell them, hey, this is my MAC address. So that's the process. You can get a freebie, but only one per customer. I went back to the well. I went back and asked for a second. They said no. Okay, so not a problem. Let's have a look at finding Supermicro Update Manager at Wired Zone. Now, I do have a little uh, video segment I recorded of me ordering the $18 product. So let's see if just typing in super micro update manager in the search dialog at wired zone works out. Nah, okay. So that would have been a little too easy. The part number is a little weird or the description might be a little off. So how about I just show you? There we go. Here's me a couple days ago ordering under this part number 1002441 or Soft, auto, band, licensing, whatever. One of those two, you type in the search, you'll be fine. And then just, uh, there you go. You see me adding it to the cart. And if you don't already have an account, when you go to check out, of course, you'll have to create one and pay for it. So within a day, I got an email announcing that it's shipped, which is just a virtual product software. And then I got an email asking about the MAC address, I believe, and uh, giving me the key. So I've done all my prerequisite work. I'm ready with a license key. So that means I can close that tab down. And we already did the uh, demo of how to request it. Come kind of done there too. And then finally, this article basically says once you get that key, you should be fine updating the bias through IPMI. So the rest of my time in this video will be spent on this tab, IPMI. Let's make a careful note of our bias, one to one B. Our machine isn't even turned on. If we do turn it on and run the Java applet, well, fine. We'll see the BIOS boot screen tell us 3.31 uh, for IPMI and 1.1 for BIOS. That's the number. Okay, enough of showing you all that. How about I get the work done? How do you actually upgrade the BIOS through this interface? Let's look around a little. BIOS update looks promising. Okay, now it's complaining about licensing, so I'm going to click on the license. And there it is. So in my case, either from Supermicro or from a place like Wired Zone where you pay 18 bucks, 
Supermicro being freebie for the first time, and Wired Zone or other resellers for $18 license for people asking more than once. You just need the license key. So let me get that on my second screen here. Click activate, upper right corner says loading in red. And node product key status activated. So that went well. It even tells us what we're doing here to get BIOS upgrade. Now let's head back, let me head back to BIOS update and let's see what happens. Nice, it's that simple. So we're gonna choose a file. Okay, we already know I extracted this uh, seven minutes ago, it turns out. There's the BIOS file. Upload the BIOS now. I like to learn a little bit about how it works and how long it takes and all that good stuff. So I'm going to make that a little smaller. I don't really need it quite so giant. Yes, size installed in there. Um, how about something like that? Let's show Ethernet traffic going. So right now we do have a bit of Ethernet traffic uh, as I control this laptop remotely, um, but that's okay. You can see kind of a steady state, small 40 kilobits or so. So if we go to upgrade the BIOS, we'll take a look at the time. It just turned to 11.07 p.m. And there it goes, just recording the process here. At this point, it uh, should be a hands-off operation. We'll see about how long that takes. And I can see that it just sent a bunch of data. At a rate of only about 10 megabits per second, didn't take very long, not a very big file. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to go with what most people will do if they don't watch this video or read about how you're supposed to do it and just click on start upgrade. What that's hinting is it's going to keep my bias settings, including the fact that I'm in UEFI mode rather than um, default mode or dual mode, which is a uh, you know, legacy and UEFI. So again, hands off process here. There's no extra Ethernet traffic over on the right because it already shoved the file up there before and staged it. And presumably at this point, um, actually, I'm not actually sure. Uh, the machine might be on, might not be on. Okay, it finished. I will say the machine stayed off. So yeah, it was off. This is blinking gently. Machine just stayed quiet, and obviously this last question is asking, now do we want to boot it for it to take effect and to see it? So now that that's done, over IPMI can do all this stuff, right? All right, so it's not making us wait any longer, so there's not really any reason we can't go to the main page here. At this point, I should just follow this. Unplug the power cord. Okay, I'm getting back into setup here. The delete key worked. And there it is. 1.1c. If you haven't played with the setting yet, you'll want to do that. Told you I'd confirm what mode we're in. And we're in dual mode. So this machine did very much go into factory default modes. So I would strongly recommend. Let's see, uh, I got my article here. And there we go. I've got a nice little looping video for you to just walk through and set your bias exactly the way I recommend, or we can just follow along with words, whatever works for you. But that's it. That's the end of this bias upgrade video for 1.1. See, hopefully you found it helpful. Thanks for watching and thanks for visiting tinkerdry.com.